Turn in your Bibles to Revelation 5. Revelation 5. Thank you for coming back tonight. I'm so glad everyone is here and safe. And I was glad I didn't go because <laughs> I would have been in big trouble. I would have been in big trouble. Um, the most important time in a church service is the preaching. So everyone get kind of settled in. We're going to read Revelation 5. And then I'll do a little review of this morning. And then we're going to jump right into it. <clears throat> Revelation 5, 5. And And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you so much. We know that you love us. We're praying that the Holy Spirit would meet with us. Please, Lord, come into our service right now and into the hearts and minds of each listener and to this speaker. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So this morning when I talked about prayer, I reminded you that prayer was asking. Very good, asking. Uh, I mentioned some other things that we do that um, technically um, they're a part of prayer, but they aren't prayer because they're asking. They're important things. They're things that I do before I pray. Um, one of the things was praise. I like to, uh, first, uh, when I'm going to pray, I like to thank God for everything that he's been doing in my life. I like to always think of things and be grateful and thankful. I like to praise God. I like to praise him for his wonderful works to the children of men. I like to adore him. I think of uh, his special names, his great power. I like to uh, meditate on some of the things that he's promised to do for us in the Bible. I like to confess my sins. And then by then, usually I'm sound asleep. Uh, but uh, if you did all those things and you didn't get to the part where you started asking, for the things, then um, that wouldn't really be praying. Actually, uh, prayer today is a legal term that lawyers use when they go into a courtroom. They say, we pray the court, which means we're asking the court. So just remember to ask. Remember to ask. Do, but do all those other things too. And don't fall asleep. <laughs> so... Um, there's some really interesting uh, facts about prayer that, I, that I'm hoping I'm going to get to be able to share with you tonight. 
and um, so it might sound a little bit like I'm contradicting what I said earlier if I if I call praising God prayer you know that I know that prayer is asking but um, I may refer to something as prayer that's not really prayer tonight but let's jump right into this verse 8 Romans uh, Revelation 5 8 when he had taken the book so let's drop down to the end of that verse where it says lamb having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors which are the prayers of saints it made me think of um, in the first chapter of the book of Luke why don't we turn over there the first chapter of the book of Luke because it talks in this verse about that the prayers of saints have an odor they have a smell to them and I was wondering what do your prayers smell like mmm yeah, how about a mmm that smells good does God say that when he hears you pray I hope so but um, in the first chapter Luke 1 verses 9 and 10 and hopefully we'll be reading a lot out of the first few chapters of the book of Luke over uh, uh, the month of December as the Christmas day approaches and I'm excited about the Christmas season even as a little child I was excited about it and even as an older child I'm a child of the king and I'm excited that Jesus gave us the greatest gift when he gave us Jesus verse 9 this is Zacharias and he's he's a priest and he's going into the temple to burn incense verse 9 according to the custom of the priest Sophias his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense so we know a lot of things in the book of Revelation are symbolic. Well, it's talking about a lamb. Well, it's talking about Jesus Christ. It's talking about prayers having an odor. Now, I, I don't think we understand exactly what heaven is going to be like. <clears throat> Paul got a glimpse of heaven. He actually died and came back, and he said he saw things that it was unlawful for him to utter he's trying to express to us that when he saw the things in heaven he couldn't describe them in a way that you could really understand them and so we find in revelation a lot of, of symbols but this thing that the priests had been doing ever since the days of moses where they would burn incense in the temple. There it was a time of prayer. So prayers are associated with smell. Uh, I'm going to teach you as much as I can in a short amount of time. I don't have a lot of notes, so I'm thinking it'll be really short, but you never know. <laughs> I may get carried away. So in, in order to be effective at getting our prayers answered we need to be consistent we need to have a time we need to have a time a good time would be first thing in the morning when no one else is awake yet because <laughs> then you're not going to be interrupted or distracted but if you have a time every day or if you get down to the end of the day and you're like, oh, I didn't pray. Well, you need to take time to pray before you go to bed. And then, uh, so I talked a lot about asking this morning. Tonight, I'm going to talk about smells that I like. When, when I would get up in the morning, sometimes I, would, I drove a long way to work. 
Uh, usually I take a little bit of money with me and I would stop at a coffee shop. They have some really nice coffee shops in America. I really miss a place called Dunkin Donuts. Because <laughs> you would walk in and it would smell like sugar and it would smell like donuts and it would smell like bread all mixed together and it would smell like coffee and they had so many different kinds of coffee. You could have vanilla and you could have as much as you want. Uh, I would like a coffee with cream and sugar and they had this syrup that they would put in it. And I would like eight pumps of caramel. So that's about that much of your cup of coffee filled with caramel. And if you've never had that much caramel, caramel in a cup of coffee, you are in for something else. <laughs> so um, just fresh bread being cooked. Uh, sometimes you can smell that. Or uh, meat being cooked. You know, there's also bad smells. We, ha we have a little dog back at our home, and it's an inside the house dog, and we only let it go outside for a little bit because we don't want it to smell like the outside. And if she gets kind of stinky, we, we give her a, a bath. But the one thing, if she's been running around, she jumps up on your lap, she'll be breathing, she'll be <sighs> in her breath, oh my. <laughs> I wonder if, if somebody's prayers smell like that. <laughs> I hope not. The smell of chocolate. I used to make deliveries in this mall, and uh, there was this store. It, they made cinnamon rolls, and they made them right in front of you. You could watch them do it. They'd roll out the dough, and then they'd spread all the butter out, and then they'd sprinkle all the sugar and all the cinnamon, and then they'd roll them up, and then they'd cut them, and then they'd stick them in the oven, and it always smelled like cinnamon rolls cooking. and you basically if you were walking through the mall if you got anywhere near there you could smell it and it was you just had to go there and buy one you just had to it was it was um, that's what God wanted me to do because it made me happy and God wants me happy right so they also had this drink I like chocolate in my drink and they had this thing called a mocha lata chill it was an iced coffee and it had um, uh, coffee flavor. It had chocolate flavor in the coffee. It was amazing. <laughs> and then uh, they had another place. All the all the ladies liked. It was like called Yankee Candles. I don't know if you ever heard of Yankee Candles, but you could go in there, and they had candles in glass jars. And every single candle smelled like something different. You know, they had like a candle that would smell like a birthday cake. And they'd have another one that would smell like a banana. Another one would smell like a pineapple and a vanilla scented candle. And you, they, they smelled, when you're just smelling one at a time, it smelled pretty good. But when the, all the smells were mixed together, it wasn't that great. <laughs> so. What's the best way to start the day? You know, there, there used to be this motto for a coffee. The best part of waking up was Folgers in your cup. So it was like, that's, you wake up and smell the coffee. It was supposed to um, make your day better. But how about if we wake up and present a wonderful smell to God in the morning when we pray? What about your prayers? Are your prayers unscented? Now, unscented means there's no smell to them at all. It means they're non-existent, like an atheist. You don't have a time to pray. You don't have a place that you pray, a place where you can get alone. You don't have a list of things you're praying for. What do your pra prayers smell like? Ah, I don't smell anything. I guess he's not going to pray today. We need to be respectful to God. God wants to meet our needs. He loves us. He'll do anything for us if we'll pray. Sometimes people who 
uh, don't normally pray, when they pray, God's so shocked, <laughs> if it's possible for God to be shocked, that he will um, he'll give them something that they ask for just because he's like, I'm going to surprise them and show them that if they do this thing, it's really going to work. So what about your prayers? Are they unscented? Are they sour? A sour. I used to eat a lot of cereal in the morning. Uh, cereal was really cheap when I was growing up. Big boxes of cereal. If I bought one here, it would be super expensive. And there was a lot of milk when I was growing up. And so we would get these gigantic bowls and we'd fill it with cereal and then we'd fill it with milk and then we'd sit down in the front of the TV and watch cartoons. And that was the, the life. That was the life. It was great. <laughs> I loved it. I, I, um, I lost a lot of my teeth before their time, but it was worth it. Every, every bite of sugary cereal. And, uh, but a lot of times, we would buy a lot of milk because we, we didn't like to go to the store very often because uh, I told you before when I would go to the store with my mom, we'd be there for like three hours. And, but we, we would leave with a lot of stuff, but we'd be there forever. And so she, uh, sometimes the milk would go bad. And she'd leave it in there because when my mom grew up, she was kind of poor. And when the milk went sour, they didn't throw anything away. Um, she's like, we're going to take that, we're going to make sourdough bread. I don't remember us ever making sourdough bread. But I do remember pouring the milk in my cereal and going, ah! And, 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 and if you've ever smelled sour milk, oh, that's awful. Or um, if you've got like a little baby bottle and uh, they have the milk in there and then um, you haven't washed it in a couple days and you open that up, oh, the smell. Changing a diaper. <laughs> that was a pleasant smell. Do, do your prayers, are your prayers like that? Are they complaining? Uh, my one daughter had this where she would projectile vomit <laughs> and what it is is um, that we put a the kids have to ride in a car seat in the back seat of the car and the um, kids often get sick and uh, when she would get sick she would throw up and it, it would land on the back of my seat and it got all over her car seat and so I don't, re I don't remember being able to get the smell that smell out of the car I, uh, like every time if the, do if the car had been sitting in the sun when I would get in I would smell that awful smell how about you does God see you coming and he's like oh no they're going to they're going to complain again. They're going to be disrespectful to me. They're, all they're going to do is complain. So, like, let's think of people. You know, when you see some person coming, uh, and are people happier when you come into the room or when you leave the room? When people see you coming, are they, oh, no, I'm not going to ask them how they're doing because they're just going to complain for a long time. So um, when, when uh, we pray, we don't want our prayers to have a sour smell. When, when we talk to people, we want um, them to be happier when they're with us than when they leave. So are your prayers prayers from a, a depressed spirit? Are you mad when you're praying? Are you blaming God? Are you blaming people? Are you making excuses to God? Does it smell like a hog farm? Uh, I don't know. Uh, they have a lot of hog farms where we live. And when you're driving, if you get anywhere close and the wind is blowing your way, you know somebody's raising pigs. Do you have prayers like, God hurt them? You prayers of revenge, bitterness. I hope not. Uh, I wonder if uh, God, somebody comes and 
is praying. Hurt them. Um, prayers like that. God like checks the bottom of his shoes to see if he stepped in something. So uh, what's that smell? What's that awful smell? I, I don't know. I had a St. Bernard when I was growing up. And so I had to be careful where I walked in the backyard because there were some bad smells in the backyard. Uh, the, there are some prayers that God will not answer. <laughs> like a, a drug addict praying for, for drugs. God's not going to answer that. Now, I remember this guy coming to me uh, when I was in the Navy. He's asking me to pray that he could get like a winning lottery ticket because you know they were behind on their bills. That's not the kind of prayer that God likes to smell. Praying for bad things. There's a law of God that's called sowing and reaping. And uh, maybe we'll talk about that another time. But if you sow bad things, you reap bad things. If you sow good things, good behavior, you reap good things. It's Okay, so are your prayers unscented? You don't have anything to say. Maybe they're sour. What about stale? You used to pray. You used to pray. How does God feel when he smells your prayers? Uh, I remember this lady's garage that I, I used to clean up. It had this smell to it. It was a stale uh, smell. Um, kind of a mildew smell of uh, dried up water. Do you have no answers that you can point to that you've been praying specifically? I, I like to get free stuff. Um, I like to get stuff for free. And so I got this coffee. There's another place that I would like to stop on the way to work called Starbucks. And they, it smelled pretty good in there. They had some really strong coffee and their coffee tasted pretty good also. But I got some coffee for free from this donation table, but the date, it, it had expired. And I thought it would be fine. Oh, it's just coffee. Coffee should be good forever, right? Well, when I went home and I, I was grinding up the coffee beans, it um, created this horrible smell and that I basically had to throw all, like, I had tons of it, and I had to throw it all away because it smelled so bad. It tasted fine, but it, uh, are your prayers stale? Do they have, like, a fish smell, maybe a tuna smell, maybe a cat smell? Um, this guy let this cat into one of my trucks that I had, and the cat um, must have got scared. And, and when animals get scared, they let off this awful smell. Uh, sometimes it's um, when they relieve themselves into the floor of your truck and you can never get the smell out. I'm mad at cats right now. I'm really mad at cats. <laughs> we had a cat and it hid. Uh, um, hey, can we take this out of the video so that Pastor Mike doesn't hear this? <laughs> so... Um, the dogs were going crazy and I'm like what is going on so I went out there and they're jumping all over the car trying to get into the car and so I popped the hood and what was on top of my engine what you what do you think would be there a little white cat and they wanted the cat they were trying to get to the cat um, so I'm kind of, I don't like cats right now I, this I was driving to church no kidding and <laughs> there was a cat coming out and I was like I'm mad at cats I swerved over there <laughs> and mom Terry was like are you trying to run over that cat I'm like yes I don't like cats anymore death to cats <laughs> how about uh, panic there's a smell animals make a smell when they panic uh, Hopefully there's no skunks. Are there skunks around here? Because there's skunks where we live and a lot of times a car will run over a skunk and then there's that smell in that whole area or if it just gets close to a skunk. You know, they say a dog can smell fear. 
I don't know. I don't know that. But panic, is your prayers, do they smell like panic? Do you only pray in emergencies? Uh, they, they used to call it, you're, you think God is your rich uncle, and when you're uh, in desperate need, you, you call your rich uncle and ask him to help you. Maybe that's why God lets you have so many emergencies. He wants to hear you pray. Uh, no, prayer shouldn't be our last resort. It should be our first resort. Our prayer should have a sweet odor. Prayers like a Sunday school teacher praying for their class. A preacher who believes that God is really there. Someone praying for souls to be saved. A soul winner praying for the power of the Holy Spirit. Asking, people asking God for help. When was the last time you had a specific prayer answered? Think about it. Or when was the last time you prayed specifically for something? Do you have good smelling prayers? I'll tell you some good smelling prayers. I'm sorry. God loves to... Oh, I love that when they pray and tell me that they're sorry. Oh, someone just prayed and said, forgive me. God loves that. Oh, somebody just prayed, give me the Holy Spirit. And you know something else? Those are prayers that God has promised to answer. So let me tell you some prayers that God always hears. In uh, Psalm chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, if you want to um, if you want to turn there, I'll read it in a minute. <clears throat> you know, uh, people, when they ask God to save them, God loves to smell that prayer. I want to God to hear me. What about you? I want to know that he will give me what I asked for. And we talked a lot about that this morning. We have not because we ask not. And we also have not because we ask amiss. I guess I should be turning there too, right? Psalm chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. The writer of the psalm, I believe it was David, was saying, I want you to hear me. Right in the beginning he says, Hear me when I call, O God. And then if you drop down to verse 3, the second half of it says, The Lord will hear when I call unto him. I want to have that kind of confidence when I'm praying. The Lord will hear me. Do your prayers bounce off the ceiling or it seems like you're not getting an answer? Ask yourself this question. Do my prayers get answered? <clears throat> Do you only make general requests? Lord bless the missionaries. Yeah, that's a, that's a really specific prayer. How about, um, how about some uh, prayers God always answers? Are you ready? God always says yes. God save me. If a, if a lost person prays and asks Jesus to save them, then God answers that. God forgive me. Uh, God said we're supposed to ask for forgiveness. God use me. Can God use you? Can God use me? God can use anybody. He used Paul. Paul was murdering uh, Christians, throwing them into jail. God, sa God said, yes, Paul, I'm going to use you. And boy, did he ever. As long as you're still alive, Brother Nestor, <laughs> God wants to use you. Pray that prayer. God, use me. You'd be surprised. 
a while ago, I started praying, God, use me. And look what happened. Look where I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How about this one? God, be patient with me. Romans 15.5 says he will be patient with you. You know, God wants us to change sometimes. And sometimes we take a long time to get around to doing what God wants us to do. So praying, God, be patient with me. That'd be a good idea. How about, God, be merciful unto me. Psalm 106, 1. His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. If you're still alive, he's already answered this prayer. He's been merciful to you. How about this one? Lord, help me to do right. <laughs> And boy, do we ever, you know, we can't, we can't do it in our flesh. We need to do it in the power of God. Help me to do right. There's victory available for you. God, help me to tell the truth. It says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the... Temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. There's help. There's victory. God, help me to resist temptation. That's a prayer that God always answers. God, help me to be strong. Help me to be a soul winner. That's a prayer that God likes to answer. Help me to do right. God, please teach me about you. Oh, God says... Oh, I love it. I love it when they pray, wanting to learn more about me. Hey, if you really want God to teach it you more about himself, about his word, show up on Wednesday night. Amen. <laughs> and, you know, some of these prayers, there's a lot of prayers that God promises to answer if he says, if you'll do this and this and this, then I will do this and this and this. Let me challenge you this week to find a promise in the Bible where God says, if you do this and this and this, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, God says, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive your sin and I will heal your land. Some, there's a lot of places in the Bible where it says, if you do this, and you do this, and you do this, and you do this, God promises to answer you. Just a quick side note. It'd be a good idea for you to write down a couple things before you pray. I want to give you a little guideline. And um, I know that prayer is asking... But like I said before, when we pray, <clears throat> God gave us several places in the Bible where he gave us sort of an outline of prayer to, to guide us in what we should be asking for and the, th the words that we can say. So uh, one of the places is in Matthew 6. The Lord's Prayer is actually in John chapter 17, but in Matthew 6... Uh, there are some things in verse 5 it talks about us having a time it says when you, put, you pray when you pray so it assumes you have a time and verse 8 talks about asking him um, in those verses in Matthew chapter 6 it talks about a place a closet a place in secret a place where you're not going to be disturbed uh, Jesus said after this manner Pray. And a lot of people use those words, you know, our Father which art in heaven, na, 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 na. and it's to them, it's just a little da 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 da. Okay, now I'm a good Christian because I can say these words and memorize these words and say these words and da 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 da. da. Oh, amen. And they didn't really say anything. They just, um, <laughs> they just recited a bunch of words. They didn't. These words are supposed to have meaning when you pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to pray for you. Romans 8.26 
The Holy Spirit says we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. Uh, Probably every night when I pray, I try to remember to pray to the Holy Spirit. And I ask the Holy Spirit to (coughs) pray for those things according to the will of God, like He promised in Romans chapter 8. This is a prayer I like to pray that I believe God will answer. Let the words of my mouth, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. God wants that to be true in your life. Praising, not swearing or bitterness or complaining. Uh, hallowed be thy name that's that part where we praise God and we adore him we think about God's attributes thy will be done controlling our mouth our mind and our actions (coughs) give us you know it says give us this day our daily bread give us is we're asking we're asking for our physical needs we're asking God to help us with our debts How many of you have some bills that need to be paid? (laughs) Right? Why don't we ask God? God uh, told us to ask for those things. So that implies that he wants to answer those needs because he told us to pray about it. Job, I think of Job, and I I love that in the end of Job where he prayed for his friends. And when Job prayed for his friends, then God change the things in Job's life for the better. Luke 11, where it talks about praying for the Holy Spirit, where we're praying to for God to lead us not into temptation, where we're praying that uh, the devil would not tempt us to do things. I, I like to pray, hold back the forces of evil. I love the, the in Matthew six thirteen, and the, the the fake versions of the Bible. A lot of them like to leave this stuff out because they they want to downplay the power and authority of Jesus Christ and God. But uh, <clears throat> I love this part where it talks about the kingdom and the power and the glory. And I made a little outline on that the, for praying. A kingdom, we pray for laborers and leaders, peoples with job, uh, opportunity, job opportunities, uh, power, spiritual power, to be able to walk in the spirit, glory for the lost people to get saved, for, to ki- for God to kill pride in my life. So there are a lot of conditional promises, and I'd like to challenge you this week to find one of them and claim one of them. Claim some promise in the Bible. Uh, Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. Let's pray.